from Gravity Art Lab and today I will be doing an acrylic painting tutorial of this oil painting by Vincent Van Gogh called The Olive Trees. Now this is the reference painting and this is my version of the painting. Here's my palette. I basically have four colors on here, um, mainly yellow and blue because I'll be making a lot of blues and greens with these colors and then I have white and black. So to start out, just to create my toned ground, I'm gonna pull out a little bit of my white. I'm gonna mix in even less of my black to create a middle tone gray. I'm not gonna worry about getting it super perfectly mixed because it doesn't really matter. This is just going to be my ground, my background, um, that's going to have a nice mid-tone base for my painting. So at this point I'm just going to speed this up a little bit to show you how I cover the canvas. Uh, basically I'm not worried too much about getting a super even coat, obviously. Um, I don't mind the variations because most of this, uh, if not all of this, will be completely covered over by my next layers. The main reason you put a toned ground on underneath your other colors is basically so that you don't have white canvas um, coming through in any areas where your coverage might be a little bit light. Um, it just tends to um, improve the overall look of the painting when you're done. But again, it doesn't, it's not a super critical step, especially if you're a beginner painter. Um, and if you just want to get started with your uh, primed canvas that's, that's already pre-primed white, uh, you can go ahead and start painting directly on top of your white. Uh, this is just something that I like to do and I do when I have the extra time. Um, I don't always do this. In fact, I usually don't do this during the paint and sip classes that we do because it just takes up a, a little bit too much time. The last thing I'll do is allow this to dry either by leaving it for a few minutes or speeding it up with a hair dryer. Okay, so I'm back. My canvas is completely dry to the touch. Um, as you can see, it's not a real smooth application of color, but that's okay because the whole idea is to apply layers of color and as we build up the layers of paint, it will fill in um, any of these areas that seem a little bit rough right now. So the first thing I want to do is lay in the overall design of the trees and the clouds and the mountains in the background just so that I, when I start to apply the paint, I'm putting it in the areas uh, that the designs are supposed to go. So I am basically just putting in my main elements right now, which um, in my opinion are the olive trees on this drawing. So I have one main tree that's in this area, and then I've got a few others that are more toward the center. And again, this is not going to be a perfect replica. It's just my impression of Van Gogh's artwork, which I think is beautiful. Um, but obviously I'm not going to be able to come up with something that's identical. So I basically have my trees laid in. This is something very close to what I'm seeing on the original. And I'll show you in a second what I'm looking at. This drives me nuts. So these, this is where the, the hills and the grasses are showing up. And then the mountains are sort of showing up in the background here. And then I've got my little swoop of clouds that are 
are generally the top and the middle, and they sort of come off the top. And I've got a little cloud over here. Here again is the original painting by Van Gogh, just to give you an idea of how I use this to lay out my drawing. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is to mix up uh, my color, and I'm going to be starting with the lighter blue on the top. So I pulled a little bit of my white paint um, to the center of my palette, and I'm just picking up a little bit of blue from the corner. I can always add <clears throat> more dark color. It's um, So you always want to start out with your lightest color first, which in this case, because I'm mixing blue and white, my lightest color would be the white, and come up with something <clears throat> that is kind of a middle ground, because I have several versions, or several tints of blue in this painting that I'm going to be doing, and so I'm not going to try to get it perfect. I am going to be mixing lighter and darker colors. Now that's a, this is a little bit lighter than what's in the original, but I am going to start with this just to start laying down color. And I'm just going to be following my lines. And now I'm painting right over the clouds, and that's mainly because my cloud layer is going to be on top of this background blue color. So that's really light. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit more blue. Mix it in. Maybe a little more. And I'm not going to worry about getting my color perfectly mixed. It's okay to have a little bit of variation in there. I think it adds a lot of interest. And if you look at the original closely, you're going to see that the colors are not perfectly blended there either. That's what gives it a lot of the interest. So I'm getting a little bit closer to the design that I see on the drawing. My chalk lines are just a guide. And I'm just sort of working that mountainscape in there. Again, this is not going to be a recreation of the original. It's just my version of it. And that's something that I know people struggle with sometimes if they're doing um, a painting of a masterpiece. They want it to be perfect. They want every little line to be in the right place and every little shape to be in the right place. And it's easy to get frustrated if, um, if you're trying to do that because it's just not an easy thing to do. Uh, I think it's more important just to get the paint on the canvas, to get something that you're happy with and that you like looking at, basically, and and not to be so, so try to be so perfect about it because it's it's just easy to get lost in the process of trying to duplicate everything perfectly, and then you you miss out on the whole point of what you're doing, which is to to have pleasure in painting. So that's basically going to be my background. Now again, I'm I tend to over blend and I'm trying really hard not to do this here because uh, the quality of, of Van Gogh's work is typically very painterly. Uh, you see a lot of brush strokes, you see a lot of imperfections. Um, and so that's sort of the feeling you want to recreate while you're doing this. So that's basically my skyline. Once again, here is the original that I'm using as my reference. So the next area I'll be working on will be the mountains in the background. And for this, I will be starting off with a straight black color and um, applying all the areas of the contours of the mountain uh, on which I'll be eventually putting blue on top once that dries. And this is just another way to make those colors in that area pop. It is similar to what Van Gogh has on the original painting. Um, and I will show you a little bit in real time and then I will speed this up to um, 
show you how that area is completed. So here once again is the reference I'm using, Van Gogh's original olive trees. Now the next area I'll be working on will be the foreground. I'm working on the bottom part of the drawing, uh, the hilly grassy area, and that's mainly to uh, give my black and my upper areas a chance to completely dry before I start working in the middle ground and the greens. So I'm starting off with a golden yellow color. I'm doing that by mixing a little bit of white with my yellow and then incorporating just a little bit of burnt umber into that just to tone it down a bit. Now at this point I'm going to speed up the video just so you can see how I lay down my tones of yellow. So I've got yellow, blue, and green. I'm mixing them together. And this is more of like a trial and error process, <laughs> especially when you're mixing more than two colors. It's hard enough when you're mixing two, but when you start incorporating three, four colors, uh, you never know what you're gonna get. So a lot of times it's just a lot of trial and error. And I actually am happy with this again. We are not trying to make this a perfect duplicate. We're trying to make it something that we're similar and that we are um, happy with in the end. And I really like that color. I'm not sure how close it is. It's actually not too bad. Um, it's fairly close to the colors that I'm trying to duplicate. I don't know if this is showing up well in the camera, but um, so that's a nice mid-tone green that I'm going to now start to apply in the areas where I see trees. And again, my colors are going to be layered on here, so this is not the final color that's going to be showing for my trees, but it's one of the colors that's going to be showing up in the background. Again, I will speed this up a little bit just so you can see how I'm laying down my primary coat of green. Once I've got the greens incorporated into the tree area, I can go ahead and incorporate it into the rest of the painting where I also see those colors. So I've got my mid-tone greens in here. I've got my mustardy yellow down here in the foreground. I've got my mountain range blocked in. I am, I'm pretty sure this is dry now, so I'm gonna start back at the top again. I'm going to start to work in my clouds. And I think I'm going to switch brushes at this point. So now that I've got most of my color blocked in, I can start to work with a smaller brush because it'll make it a little bit easier for me to get in some of those small areas. So I'm washing my brush out really well. The brushes I use have acrylic bases, so I don't mind just leaving them sitting in the water. But if you have the time, it's not a bad idea just to sort of rinse them out, tap them out, and then set them off to the side so they're not in the way. Now, my next brush I'm going to use is just a smaller, um, another flat brush. I 
tend to prefer my flat brushes over my round brushes, but that's, again, that's a personal preference. I just feel like I have more control with them. So I'm getting this wet, and then I'm going to go, and I'm just gonna go straight into my white right now. I've got a little bit of green mixed in there, it's fine. It's not a problem. But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm sort of going to sketch in my clouds again and this is one of the things that is I think so interesting about this painting is this little cloud formation. Once again speeding this up a bit so that you can see how I lay down the white areas of the cloud. And once again, when I'm done doing my primary area with that color, I can go ahead and incorporate the same color, in this case white, into the foreground and the different areas of the painting that I see that require it. In the details on my mountains, because my mountains are going to be behind my trees, so I don't want to start putting in the details of my trees before I've got the mountains in there. The trees will be over them. So this is probably the trickiest part for me anyway is to is to add the details in these mountains. They are, I'll show you the original again. Um, so I'm really working these details in, which I'm seeing just a bunch of different uh, tones of blue. A little bit of green in there, so I guess I'm just going to get started. I'm going to start with just my cobalt blue. I believe that's what that color is. I'm going to scoop some of my white. I'm going to create another little pile of color right below the blue I had created for the sky and I'm going to try to make this a little darker. I want to have a little bit of a variation of blues available on my palette so I can sort of dip into them as I go. So there's my slightly darker blue and I'm going to start to work this in with little uh, obvious brush strokes. Um, almost like I'm working with chalk pastel rather than paint. And I don't want too much paint on my brush to start with. I just want to give it a shot. So I'm basically just going to start drawing my little mountain shapes in here. I'm trying to leave some of the black showing in the background. It's not going to be super easy um, if you have lots of paint on your brush, which I do, but some of this black will show through in the background. Anyway, got an interesting little heart shape right here. I love. It's the second heart I found in this painting. Once again, speeding up the video a bit, you can see how I'm applying the mid-tone blue to my mountainous areas. I will mix up some slightly different variations of the blue by incorporating a little bit more white into it first to get my lighter shades of blue and then a bit more blue and a, lo a little bit more black to get some of the deeper blues and the darker shades of blue in there. Uh, but again, it's Similar techniques, I'm still using uh, the same flat brush to apply the paint and I just keep working at it until I'm happy with the results. Now you might also notice that I'm not applying the paint completely. I'm trying to allow a lot of the black to continue to show through 
again, it's it's that method of uh, having more of a painterly effect than having something that looks completely realistic. And I am now applying the darker tones that I mentioned where I incorporated a little bit more blue and a little bit more black into my blue mixture to get some of these additional shades of blue. Okay, so I also am seeing some blues down here, some slightly lighter blues, so I'm going to lean that up just a little bit. Can you see that? Okay. Again, while I have this color on my brush, I like to start working it into the areas on the painting that have similar colors. So I'm working this in. This is sort of <coughs> going to be an area where I have a tree base. I've got lots of really pretty blues in this area blues and yellows, and in here, got kind of like a swirly shape in there that I will add in with my blacks eventually. I've got a little bit of blues poking through here, and actually what I'm doing is a little dangerous because I'm trying to eye in certain shapes where I think the trees are, will end up, but it's possible <laughs> once I start putting the trees in, they end up in a slightly different location. So again, this is the background. It's easier for me to get the background in first before I start working the details in. And my brush is getting a little too wet. And here's what happens when, or I'm sorry, it's getting too dry. And when you start rubbing a drier brush over a painted area, you start getting these little dots in there that are where the canvas is shown through. If you start getting that and that's not the effect you're going for, which it's not <laughs> um, for me right now, you want to make sure you get a little bit more paint and a little bit more water on your brush to alleviate that issue. If you are trying to get you know, less paint applied, you wanna try to vary that with, with your pressure that you're applying. Now I'm getting a little bit more paint than I wanted on here, um, but it's sort of this dance you have to do. You, you can't always, <laughs> you know, get the effect that you want with the amount of paint that you have, with the brush that you have. So sometimes you have to sort of work with it a little bit. So I will go back in and add some lighter colors there, but I actually kind of like the way that's starting to look there. I like having those brush strokes in there. I like that um, definitely more of a painterly effect than having a flat color in any area. So I may end up just leaving that in there. It's not exactly like the original, um, but that's what makes it to me interesting and unique is when I can put a little bit of my own personality and spin on it. And I think that's important for everybody to sort of, you know, gain some confidence and, and put their own little styles and te techniques into some of their paintings. So, let's see, we've got a tree that's going to be coming over here a little bit. I've got that, so I've got most of my blues most of my glue's worked in here. Now I'm going to start with a middle tone gray for my tree the chunks. I just washed out my brush. Still have a little bit of paint in there, but it's fine. Okay, so to get that middle tone gray, I'm going to start out with a little scoop of white. Again, I always want to start with my lightest color and I'm going to work in a little bit of black um, 
a lot of artists don't make gray by mixing black and white. They mix gray by mixing um, complementary colors and white, and it does make for a more interesting, richer color. However, um, that's, I think, a little bit too complicated for beginners, for a beginner class, when there's so many other things that you're trying to accomplish, um, you know, mixing, trying to come up with the perfect color when you're mixing three or four of them is, uh, it's a little daunting at first. So for me, I like just starting with black and white, mix a nice basic gray, um, and then you can always add color to it, so. Okay, so my main tree figure, again, I wanna get this nice and scrape off as much of the paint as I can so that I just have a little bit on the tip so I don't get too much in here. And I'm just going to start, and this is really light. My computer keeps shutting off, okay. I'm just figuring out where I want my tree trunk. It's more kind of an, a reverse S shape here. And I'm using a lighter color because um, I'm gonna come over it with black and darker grays eventually. I'm just, again, using this almost as a sketching tool to get my tree sketched in, make sure it's, I'm happy with the location before I go ahead and add all the detail. So that's my main tree chunk over here. I'm not sure if it's easy enough for you to see, but now I have some more. I have, I think, three in the center area. I'm gonna go a little bit darker with this. So I'm now going to be working in my trees in the middle here. Okay. I've mixed up a slightly darker shade of gray that I'm now incorporating into my painting to uh, add the details of the tree trunks. And then I will go ahead and start to add some additional textures into the trees themselves and into the foreground and the, uh, the grassy areas. Okay, so I'm picking up some of my yellow, which I definitely want to incorporate into my sky. My sky is nice and dry. If you have um, a wet sky for any reason, if you have blue in your sky right now and you work your yellow into it, you are going to get a nice green color. Um, which is fine. It's just uh, may not be what you're looking for. So you want to be careful. It's important that you let your paints dry sometimes if you don't want to get the mixing of the colors. And sometimes even when you do that, you're going to get colors maybe that you're not anticipating. Um, and that's because, uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of these colors are sort of transparent. And so if I were to put yellow on top of blue even though the blue is dry I and, and it's showing the background through it you are going to see some of that you know green tone coming through and that's so okay. lighter yellow in these areas I'm trying to see if I see any lighter yellow on the trees and I do so I'm going to be working some of that into the tree trunks I don't see a lot of it but I do see some in this tree and this tree to me is sort of one of the focal points of the painting, so I want to make sure that I have my highlights in there.
So that was just the blue, the yellow, and the white. And I'll list my colors at the bottom so you know exactly what colors I'm using. I'm going to scrape off my brush a little bit. Alright, so now it's time to get in some of the the final details of this painting. So I have this one sort of swoop of a wave that I've been kind of neglecting a little bit that I want to work in here. And when I start to put the, the blacks in it, some of this detail is really going to start to pop. Now it's time to bring in some of the darker colors. I am going to bring in a little bit of the shadowing detail in the trees. I'm going to incorporate, I'm just rinsing my brush out right now. I'm going to incorporate some of this um, burnt umber into my, into my green. So there's my burnt umber mixed in my green. It's a, a darker muted color. I'm going to start to. Mm. It's very, very, very transparent. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of the white. The white is uh, a secret that I use <laughs> when I'm working with student grade paints that don't have a lot of opacity. Um, it always helps to add white into it. The blackout white that I use is nice and opaque. Um, it will lighten the color a little bit, but not so much that um, it's changing the overall look of the of the painting, in my opinion. So I'm okay with it. I want to try to get <clears throat> a deep, um, almost like a brown brownish green. So I am now mixing more of my burnt umber into my green. Kind of a, not a pretty color, <laughs> but I think it'll look pretty when I get it on the canvas. Just working into the areas where I'm just going to a touch of black in there. Just having a little bit of problem with my my opacity here. Yeah, that's very dark. But okay, so I like to see a little bit more detail than what I'm seeing with this brush. So I am going to switch to my my little brush. I'm actually. I'm switching to this um, really fine, sometimes it's called a rigger. I'm not sure what this one, yep, this one's called a rigger. I'm going to pick up that darker color and I'm twirling my brush in it. So here I am and I'm actually now getting to the final detail part. So I'm using my little brush. And it's just to add texture. It's not really adding a ton of detail. But just to get the texture, so I'm not getting big globs of paint on here. Oh, here's my dog to join me. So I'm just doing little circular kind of, you know, dots and little circular strokes and um, adding, again, texture back into the painting. a little bit more than I could have gotten with my larger brush. There's a lot more swirls going on here and you know that's 
sort of characteristic of a Van Gogh painting. And so I think that's, you know, those details are important to, to work in. Notice I'm not going straight on black to start with. I'm going with my kind of uh, brownish green color that I mixed up. And then each time I dip my brush in, I kind of wiggle it around and, and turn it, spin it. I'm not sure if you can see that. And that's just to maintain a nice point on my brush and to load my brush with enough paint that I can um, continue without having to reload every five seconds. <laughs> but you know, these thinner brushes, that, that is sort of what makes them a little bit more difficult to use is that you're constantly having to reload them. Now another thing I like to do when I'm using my my small rigger is to <clears throat> water down my paint quite a bit. So it's definitely a thinner consistency than what I have when I'm using my larger brushes and that just allows it to to um, apply a little bit more smoothly, more like I'm using a pen um, a dipping pen as opposed to a paintbrush. I'm, you know, sort of dragging more of an ink, inky texture across the can. This just makes it so much easier, makes it flow so much better. And, you know, don't get too caught up in making this perfect. It's not going to be perfect. I know I keep saying that, um, but it's just, you know, it's important. So there. So I like the the interest that I'm getting now with this rigor. I'm glad I pulled this out. Don't usually do this in my classes, but it certainly does make it easier to do certain effects. And in this painting, I think it's important to have that little bit of extra detail um, that the texture is giving. So it's not. I'm not trying to get perfect. I'm not trying to get every little mark exactly the way. He has it on his drawing, but I'm trying to get the texture of the, the olive trees. And in order to do that, I'm needing to use this finer detail rigor brush. Okay, <clears throat> so that's fine for my first tree. I'm just gonna try to work in some of the details of this, whoops. I'm going to take my blue, scoop that over to the side. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, scoop that over to the side. I'm going to add a little bit of white. Mix that all in, see what I come up with. And I'm trying to create a really pretty teal color and I'm actually kind of close to what I'm looking for already. I just need to dull it down a little bit. I don't want it to be too bright and shiny. I want it to be a little bit more dull. So I added a little bit of black in there. Um, I lost a little bit of the teal though. I'm gonna bring a little bit more yellow in here. This is a trial and error process. Um, if you have the time, it's not, it's kind of fun to do. 
Okay, this is close to what I want. So I am going to get most of the paint off my brush and I'm just working in that last little areas of color that I skipped. This is good. I want to work in a slightly lighter shade of that before I'm all done. I need some highlight, I need some white back in there, and I need, I'm going to use my rigger for that. Maybe even a little bit of black back in there. Okay, so final details, getting some nice light, lighter highlights. I'm just mixing up a little bit of Um, the dark green, I mix some white in with it. So I'm, I want to do some white highlights. I'm just trying to get my rigor a little bit cleaner um, and a little bit wetter. Again, I'm going for a, a much lighter consistency on my paint because I'm using my rigor now. Um, but I'm trying to bring in some of the highlights. Now, I brought in some of these low lights, but I'm trying to bring in these highlights now. These are definitely a little bit more um, pronounced, I think, than the original. But again, I'm I'm kind of liking this. I'm kind of liking seeing this added little detail in here. It's just giving it more interest. It's giving it more definition. And because we weren't adding as much texture with, uh, you know, the smaller brushes other than, than this, the rigor, uh, this is my chance to sort of add that texture back in without adding all the detail. I just added quite a bit more water. And I don't want to forget this little heart he has up here. It's like one of my favorite parts of this. I don't want to miss that. And it, just to make sure I'm not, you know, just don't have this really blatant heart in the middle, I want to incorporate some of this into the rest of the sky area up here so it doesn't stand out so much. There we go. And as it softens up, as I press harder um, and I have less paint on my brush, I can start to work in some of the softer areas toward the center. Soften the whole thing up. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Have a little bit of a swoop in here I missed. I'll get that back in there. 
Um, I'm just scanning my whole painting just to make sure I didn't miss anything that I think was a critical part of this. Final touch-ups. Um, I do have a little mountainous area here that I missed. Oh yeah, almost forgot these. So I'm not sure if this was the sky poking through or just part of the detail. Um, but there were two little, almost like cave-like shapes here. I want to miss. Once again, here is an image of the reference I'm using of the original. And speeding this up a bit, so you can see how I lay down the final details of the blue in the mountains with my rigor brush. There we go. Now it's always fun to go back in and incorporate black. So if you want to go in and just sort of add back some of those lines that maybe might have disappeared in between the mountains, um, you can do that. Again, it depends how detailed and how close to the original you're trying to get. Um, I kind of like, you know, when, when some of this stuff stands out a little bit more. So I'm adding some of those details back in, but completely optional at this point. And there you have it. My version of Van Gogh's Olive Trees.